So, a list of things I will never get over. One, Rue and Prim's deaths in the Hunger Games. Okay, I will never get over it. And sure, that's a spoiler, but all the books and movies are out, so at this point you should have read or watched it, so... Just saying. Two, how Zac Efron was not at the High School Musical 10th Anniversary Reunion. Like, if you're not there, then how are we all in this together? And three, this book. I will not get over it. The Rose Society. Oh my god. I just cannot. I, like, I've been, I just won't. How am I even supposed to review this? Because I can't even. Let's get started. My name is Otterbrook Adejari, also known as Nerd Singing, and today I will be reviewing The Rose Society by Marie Lu. It is the sequel to the book, uh, The Young Elites, of course by the same author. Um, go read that book if you haven't read it, because that's really good, and this is really good too, dare I say better. And go check out my review of The Young Elites right there, and let's get started. So, now to review, um, Adelina has been kicked out of the Dagger Society. And now she's on a path of revenge against the daggers, against the inquisitioning access, whatever, however you pronounce that, I don't know. And all the people who've wronged her. So this book is basically Adelina's revenge. And it's really good. It's way, way darker than the first book. Like, the first book was dark. This is darker. Like, fuchsia is darker. And it's... It's difficult because you see the way that she's like struggling but also is trying to be like hardcore and like no nonsense and love and I love that it's awesome but like also it's like Adelina you just need a hug you just need lots of hugs just I just want to hug you you know because she's doing some pretty bad stuff in her revenge stuff and it's like difficult because you want to tell her don't do that because it's just not good but it's also like rooting her on for doing it, and you, you as a reader feel conflicted and stuff. Because she's an anti-hero protagonist, and those are difficult to root for, you know, most times. But I do love a story with an anti-hero protagonist. So, now the non-Adelina point of views are longer, considering she's not in there. Because, like, in the first book, Raphael, it would just turn his point of view to see what's He's thinking about the situation at hand and maybe a private com conversation between him and some other daggers. But now, when it's like Raphael's um, uh, point of view, for example, it's way longer because Adelina's not in the situation. Like, they're actually like halfway. They're across the world from each other or whatever. So, yeah. And of course, the non Adelina po point of views have uh, no uh, quotes before them, but the Adelina quotes that are in her chapters are really good and they really tie into the chapter. So what I do is like, I read the quote before I read the chapter, then I read the whole chapter, then I go back and I reread the quote to see how it ties in with the chapter, and it just, it's just right, it's just perfect. The writing of this book is so descriptive and so good, it is difficult to stop reading, like I have to stop at a chapter at the end of the chapter because I cannot just stop in between the middle of the chapter or else like I would go crazy and like when I pick up reading I would have to like reread that chapter so but you don't want to put the book down like once you pick it up you just want to read it forever and read until you finish and that's what I love about it so it's a great book um that's it for the non-spoiler review and if you haven't read it then go read it I really really recommend it and now for the spoiler review, so if you have read it, let's go. Adelina and her roses. Her roses! You get a girl! Be a leader! Get what yours! She got what hers. Anyway. So, Adelina is going crazy, and the fact that this is being caused by her powers, and her powers can eventually kill her, that's scary. And, okay, maybe, maybe she deserves that, whatever, I don't care, she's a, she's my girl, she's been through so much, she, I just want her to be happy. And then, like, Enzo betrayed her, but, like, I understand why he betrayed her, but she just, she just, she just, oh, it's like, 
She's only power crazy because she's felt weak. She's felt at her lowest and she doesn't want to feel that way again. So understand why she's a little hung up on her powers, even though Violetta wants to take it away from them, from her. And I feel that would be the best choice for her because, I mean, now she's a queen and she just has powers. I, yeah, but she actually likes doing that because she doesn't want to have, she doesn't want to feel weak anymore. And it's, it's really sad. Deep down when you think about it, it's it's quite sad that she needs to feel that she can hurt someone and able to feel safe. And I, that just really gets to me about the book, so. But also, not that I like comparing books to each other, I can't help but to feel her power, like, struggle with the illusions. It kind of reminds me of, like, Divergent. And I'll say this, why? Because... Break out of the illusion. Break out of the illusion. It's not real. Tell me it's not real. Um, and just because, like, in Divergent, it was, like, the whole, um, what's it called? Frick. The stuff, the mental frick. And, you know, she had to, like, she's not all about that frick. I have not read Divergent in a while. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of fandoms. So... Now the romantic aspect, and I like romance, but like sometimes I feel romance can distract from the overall plot, but here with like, Maggiano kind of like, liking Adelina, and Adelina not being able to like, handle those feelings, it's really sad because I just want them to be together and happy, because Adelina deserves him, he's just a nice dude, he doesn't hate her, and like Enzo, like he's alive again, but he's, he's not Enzo, and taking a life source and whatever, so he doesn't really need her, I guess, anymore since they're far away, but when they're like together, like, some freaky stuff can happen. Not freaky stuff, but you know what I mean. You read the book, you're watching this. Anyway, Maggiano and Adelina. I just, I want more of that in the third book. And I think this might just be a trilogy. And I'd be fine with it as just a trilogy. Even though, like, oh, YA trilogies and whatever. But I feel that this would be a really good one. Because if it had maybe more books, it might just drag out the series too long. So... A thing that really got to me, though, was Terran and how he was so hell-bent on getting rid of, like, the Malfettos that he was, like, disobeying Giulietta, I don't know how to pronounce her name, the Queen, former Queen, um, and he was, it was, like, scary, like, legitimately, he was, like, killing them, Jerry compared to, like, concentration camps and Hitler, but that part, that just really... Not like got on my nerves, but got like under my skin and it bothered me. I was like, oh. So in this book, there are no real good guys and bad guys unless like it's the Inquisition, Axis, and the Malfettos. I mean, not the Malfettos, and Terran against the Malfettos. Even though that's like a subplot, but like in the main major plot, there are no real like bad guys or good guys, but just people who are complicated. Oy, like real life. So, Adelina's Revenge was a really good book. I mean, The Rose Society was a really good book. And, um, I hope you enjoyed reading it as much as I did. And thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts. Um, follow me on my stuff down below. And I'll see you later, eventually, sometime, with my next video. Bye!